Hello again, good friends. We come to the end or the, la the closing uh, video of topic one. In this one, we're just simply going to brainstorm a little bit some of the strategies for developing a personal leadership style. I understand that it will take a lifetime to build a leadership style. Uh, and, and even when you cross over to the great beyond, you will have still been working on it. But I'm going to help you lay out some of the framework and, and identify some of the concerns for developing a personal leadership style that are so important to you. We've actually covered in topic one four subtopics, how organizations work and differences between leaders and managers, models of leadership, and, status, and this is the last strategies for developing a personal leadership model. Now, developing your leadership style does not need to wait until you're given the keys to the executive suite. I laugh about that because don't wait till you're named president of an organization or, or senior pastor to develop your leadership style. You can get to work on it right now. Wherever you are in your career, whatever career you've chosen, you can cultivate the essential habits of self-awareness. The process of finding a style will look different for everyone, but here are a few key steps you can take to make sure you develop an approach that is true to you. The first thing is to understand that imitation is the enemy. You are not someone else. Just copying someone else is not going to work for you. Uh, I'm in an age where I remember an old television commercial that would say there's nobody else in the whole human race with your kind of style and your kind of grace. And it'd show this fat guy bowling and all these different things going on. But you are you. You are not me. You are not someone else. You are yourself. And every leader has different styles. Uh, no leaders, two leaders have the same style. And no leadership style fits every organization. You know, not only are leaders different, but as those leaders lead in different places, their leadership styles are different. What you do next in, 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 in the, as you move into the managerial ring, the work of uh, leadership requires flexing different qualities depending on the context and the situation. When you notice you're starting to imitate the style of your idol, throw that archetype out the window. You, you are not someone else. Build yourself. Learn how to do this to lead on your own in a style that fits you. That's what you must do. I remember many years ago, I was 18 and I went to seminary and we took a class on preaching. And some of the guys were running around just, just finding all of these sermon books and they were just taking what was in those books and preaching them and they were better preachers for a while than the rest of us were. But those of us that learn to build our own sermons, to express our own thoughts, eventually rose above them to a height that they could not catch up with. If you imitate someone else, you will never rise above that person. Be yourself. Imitation is your enemy. And you have to know your strengths and weaknesses. This really refers to self-reflection and, and honesty with self. What are the things that come naturally to you? And, and where do you struggle? Maybe you're a fast learner and great at getting things done, but sometimes sacrifice quality for quantity. You, you could be confident in the work you create on your own, but when you get into the conference room, you struggle to speak. You are yourself. You must be yourself, but you must know yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Becoming a great leader means working on yourself so that you can support and develop others. And that requires a different kind of work. Getting honest with yourself and your qualities is an essential step. Now, you have to understand the influence of bias in your life. All of us are somewhat biased. Uh, we, we, if it's different than us, maybe we don't like it. But listen, we live in a great multicultural world. The biases of the past uh, cannot be adopted and embraced by leaders. This is a big one. You develop, developing your leadership style means understanding that certain aspects of your approach may cause others to interpret your behavior through the distortion of subconscious biases. 
They can be affected by factors such as age, gender, race, nationality. Uh, you need to, to develop yourself. You need to know your strengths and weaknesses, but you also need to recognize your personal biases so that you can begin to alleviate yourself from them. Uh, biases lead to the question, what's a bold, warm leader left to do when he or she aspires to lead his or her own team authentically? Master your biases to more fully interface with those different from yourself. Not a day goes by where I live that I don't interface with someone different than myself, that I may not meet someone of a different nationality uh, doing different jobs. Uh, recently, a good friend of mine told me that he hated to go on vacation because he, he, uh, his house cleaner panics when he leaves because she so desperately needs the money that she makes for each time that she cleans his home. And he, was, he told me, he said, I want to help her, <clears throat> but I don't want to be forever obligated. I said, well, tell her you have a friend. Well, this, and, and my wife and I went and got stuff and sent to her, so we got her through the hard time. But there we have a person who is Bangladeshi, living in the United Arab Emirates, who, is, who, who married a husband that was a, a Muslim, so she converted to Islam, who was raised a Christian. Uh, her husband left her, and here she is cleaning houses just trying to survive. She's a valuable person. Her feelings matter. You know, we need, we need to look at our biases and, and try to get over those biases. See people as human beings. Recognize our similarities rather than our differences. And if you're going to be a leader, you have to be able to interface with those different than yourself. Your biases can't control you. You have to be brave, courageous, and confident. Uh, and confident. That means, you know, people generally follow people that are, have or exhibit confidence in themselves. Being self-aware and, and honest reflection is the work of a confident leader. Yes, I may make a mistake, but I made it in good faith. I may fall on my face, but I fell on my face moving forward. I may make a mistake, but everyone makes mistakes. I made the best judgment that could be made at the time. If you stand around wringing your hands, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to fail, oh, I'm this, I'm that, people are not going to be very likely to follow you. So you have to have the ability to, to evaluate yourself, uh, rid yourself of your biases, but also develop confidence in yourself and be courageous. You know, you try, so, so you try and fail. The only people that fail are those that try when you begin to cultivate your leadership approach and, and to grow as a leader, you're going to do that all throughout your career, throughout your life. You're, you're going to know that stepping into a management role does not mean losing your authenticity, but it means a different kind of required work. Take time for self-reflection. Understand the influence of biases. Seek out opportunities to demonstrate your bravery and your ability. You can then develop a leadership style that is all your own. You also have to recognize that when you see leadership styles and you understand models of leadership, that you recognize again that there is no one size fits all. You will develop your own. You will use bits and pieces of each one of the styles to apply into a leadership style that fits you and makes you authentic. And that's what you must do. Now, before I close, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, where I took part of this, in a large portion, because this is the work, not of myself, but of uh, Ostermeyer 2019. And this came out of the, uh, the uh, Harvard Business Online. And uh, I thought it was very important. I did my best to leave it as it was, unless I found what I deemed to be a grammatical mistake or needed to make it uh, a little bit easier to, to comprehend. We will delve more fully into the individual leadership models in the days ahead. More good things are, are yet to come. For now, I acknowledge the work of Ostermeyer from the Harvard Business School Online, and uh, I want to tell you that you can become, you can build your leadership style. You can grow. 
But you have to look within. You have to fairly and honestly analyze yourself, see what you want to be, and then look at what will help you get there and look at what's hindering you. And I very strongly encourage you that it is time in your life to begin to abandon your biases and begin to operate and treat each person fairly and justly. Every person matters. And as a leader, you're going to have to evaluate and, and value each individual.